All right, good. So we had a slight delay. No, we're we're back in the saddle. Let's let's learn the half Torah for this week's Torah portion. The half Torah is the portion. It's it's, it's usually a, a segment of the prophets. Sometimes it's also from the from the writings from Shmuel from uh, from other places. Shmuel, or from uh, from from other places as well. And the, it has usually has some connection to the portion of the week that we're reading. Of course, this week we're reading about Abraham. So let's go. This is a prophecy of Isaiah. Isaiah the prophet. He was one of the first the earlier prophets of, the, of what's called the later prophets. He was in the middle of this first temple. And here he was warning the Jews, telling them not to do sins, but he was also assuring them that no matter what they do, that God is never going to leave them and God is always going to be with them. Always. No matter what. And that, that despite all the enemies that they have and all the people that try to you know the missionaries and all the other weird Zionists and, and the secularists and the intellectualists and simple enemies, you know, just anti-Semites and just people that just hate the Jews and Jews that hate themselves, despite no matter what it is and the sinners and people that do, that do bad things, like David and King David, we see that King David, all of his enemies were, you know, in addition to the outside enemies, were Jews. <clears throat> Nevertheless, God will always love the Jews. And that's how it starts off. Oh. <clears throat> the prophecy of God coming through the prophet Isaiah. Lama Tomer Yaakov, why, Yaakov, why should you say, Yaakov, why should you say, Israel and Israel, why should you speak, Nistara Darki Meshem, that God is, is not going to pay, is not paying attention to me. Umealokai Mishpati Yavor. And whatever I do, God sitting, he's not going to judge me because he doesn't care. God doesn't care about the Jews anymore. We, we've, we've, uh, we've done too many sins. Just it's gone all overboard and God is not, has forgotten me. Let's look at Rashi a little bit. My people, Yaakov, they'll say when they're in exile, maybe it is hidden in front of God's eyes, everything that we are doing. And if, including our bad things, but also our good things. The good things Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov did, all the merits the Jews have, God doesn't pay any attention to it. Do not, hello, Yadata, don't you know, hello, Shamata, have you not heard? Elokei Olam Hashem, the God of the world, Bore Katsos Ha'oretz, that he created the ends of heavens. Lo Yaif, he never gets tired. Lo Yigan, he never gets worn out. In Chekel Tavunaso, you have no way of understanding his greatness, right? You cannot understand the greatness of what God is. <clears throat> and the only reason that he has done all these, he will never forget your, <clears throat> the, the good things that the Jewish people have done. And, and he's going to redeem you and bring you all to the land of Israel. Why is he delaying it? Only in order that it should stop the sins and the sinners by means of this, torture that he's putting the Jews through. God gives to the tired power, and those people who have no energy, atzmo yarbe, his, they will increase their energy. God will do miracles to increase. In the end, God will strengthen all the Jewish people, and he'll bring them back. Yafu <clears throat> no'arim, the agiu, says that the evil people, <clears throat> the your enemies, and the youth of them, that they will, uh, that they have denied all the commandments. <clears throat> and those that are now very powerful and strong, they are going to <clears throat> trip and be weak. And those people that believe in God, God is going to give them new power. That's the next sentence.
those who hope for God, who trust in God, God will give them new power. And they will spread their wings like eagles. And they will, <clears throat> and no one will be able to touch them. <clears throat> they will go, people might pursue them, but they'll never uh, be weak. Jews will never be weak. All of the non-Jews, the Gentiles that live in the farthest places of the world, in the in the, um, the farthest islands, uh, they will also try to gather up power. They, and they will try to get a hold of you, and they'll speak together, and and they will try to judge you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Right. But it says, uh, God says no. That God said, I will reprove them right in front of them. They'll see that all their tricks and their, their desires against the Jews are not going to work. Who is the one that shined? God saying, now let me remind you, Jews, of what type of merits you have. Who is the one that woke up from the East? The righteous one. Here it says, this is talking about Abraham, Rashi. That tzaddik, that, that one who was righteous, that... Um, <clears throat> who woke him up and brought him from Aram Narayim? It's talking about Abraham. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, Eret Avraham. They made it. Who was the one that woke up Avraham and he brought him from Aram Narayim, which was in the east? And he was righteous. And the justice and the righteousness that he did, this is order that he should go and by, by foot and call to every person that was passing by. Who is the one that did that? God will put in front of you all the nations and angels will go down like the, like the dirt. They will be destroyed like, like uh, straw, just like straw that, that, um, that, is, that flies up in the air. Right, here he says that the, that the Keshet is talking about the bow and arrow or whatever, that your weapons will make your enemies fly like uh, nothing. Just today, I, was in, I gave a class, and one of the people in the class, he told me a story, and I remembered another story from that. He said that he uh, was um, in, the, in, the, in the Yom Kippur War and that they took prisoners. And the prisoners told him that they saw these huge uh, elderly Jews riding on horses, fighting against them. And they were so scared. And I remembered, I used to have a Chabad house in uh, a city called Or Yehuda. There's a lot of Iraqi Jews there. Iraqi Jews, they speak Arabic. They understand Arabic perfectly. They speak it at home. Like, like the Ashkenazi Jews speak Yiddish, they speak Arabic at home. A lot of them, I don't know about the new generations, but the old generations for sure. And there were a lot of uh, cab drivers. The cab drivers were all Iraqis. And I became very friendly with them. And one of them told me that when he, that they, when they took a lot of prisoners in the Yom Kippur War, it was very amazing because the, the Yom Kippur War, uh, the, we were totally defeated. <clears throat> the Arabs broke through from the North and the South. Anyway, not that, in the end we won. And we took a lot of prisoners, tens of thousands of prisoners. And they took Iraqi soldiers, uh, uh, the Iraqi Jews, Jewish soldiers, to watch over them because they understood what they were saying. And he's told me that the that the prisoners asked him, "We see all these young people. Where are your old people?" So he said, "What are you talking about?" And, uh, and the old people, the oldest person in the army is like 50 years old, 55 years old. He said, "No, no, no, no. We saw these old, huge old people that were fighting with you. We were so scared." So we see that God does not leave the Jewish people alone. That's what he's saying. That God is going to fight your battles for you. <clears throat> Uh, 
they will run after you, they'll pursue you. <clears throat> but but raglav lo yavo. But he, they won't uh, they won't get on. They won't halach al morsav b'shalom lo nichshal baradfo osam. It says that, oh, that you. I'm sorry. You will you will run after them, <clears throat> and you won't stumble. You won't stumble. There's another explanation that says it's exactly the opposite. That they'll they'll run after you, and and, they, and they, you will flee from them because you won't stumble. In other words, you'll be outnumbered five hundred to one, but and you don't have to worry. They're not gonna they're not going to uh, do anything to you. They can't. Who is doing all this? <clears throat> Who is knew all the generations in the future? I, God, I am first, and I am the last. I am the one. What's God saying? I was the one who promised Abraham all these things. You think I'm going to renege on my promise? I knew what was going to be. I know all these future generations. Don't worry. What I promised Abraham that all the Jews are going to do tshuva, and they're all going to come to the land of Israel, for sure it's going to happen. There he says, Lu et Zot, if it wasn't for this, that I knew what was going to happen in the first, even from Adam Arishan, from the first man, what he did, <clears> the <throat> Avram Gam et Zot, therefore also what I promised to Abraham, it will be the same thing. I am the first one to do miracles, and I am the last one, and I am also with you. Even the last generations, don't worry, I'm always going to be with you, says God. Look at all of the, um, the, the islands. And the, all of the islands, they will see and they will be afraid. The end of the world, they will all tremble with fear. Korvu, they'll come close. The, the Yasion, what's Yasion mean? And they'll come, they'll gather to war against you. They'll become strong, right? <clears throat> they'll, come, they'll, they'll come, they'll be very powerful. But nevertheless, they'll all start shaking when they see the future redemption that's going to be. They will, this, strangely, this sentence is used by, uh, in, in Jewish, you know, the religious people, when they meet, sometimes they put a big banner up. They say each person should strengthen his friend. But really, this sentence is saying about the, our enemies. The enemies will strengthen one another and each one will tell to the other one, be, be brave, be strong, be strong. <clears throat> they will make all sorts of idols. Yechazek cherish, they'll call the, whatever it is, the craftsman and the, the metal worker. And he'll prepare his uh, hand, their hammers and they'll hit uh, on the on the metal in order to make idols, <clears throat> and they'll stick them in the ground in a good place so they'll be very very strong with nails so that they won't move. Right, they're idols that they make. They'll make these huge idols of gold or whatever to to the sun or to the moon or whatever they things that they worship. But you Jewish people, my servants, yeah, Jacob, that I chose you, the seed of Abraham, the ones that I love. that I made you strong from the, I held you, I held you together from the ends of the earth and <clears throat> from the powerful ones, I call you and said to you, my servant you are, I have chosen you and I will never reject you, right? I just read a, a beautiful sikha to the Rebbe. Interesting, this Torah portion starts off with God calling to Abraham. And interestingly enough, it doesn't say why doesn't say anything about that Abraham was special or what he did before, even though there were things that he did do before. It says that he went through a, the, the, the fiery furnace and said, by Noah, for instance, it says that Noah was a holy person, an East Sadiq, and that's why God called him. And so it is with all these other people. Why the reason why in the Torah, why God, and with Abraham, it doesn't say any reason why God called him. It doesn't have any reason. So the Rebbe says the, the, the reason why it doesn't explain any of the greatness of Abraham or his character or the things that he did, because it's really not important. 
the one the thing that's really important what divides the jewish people from all the other nations is not their qualities or their characters or their service of god what divides them is that god chose them god chose them himself because god chose them which is illogical he didn't choose them from any reason for any reason therefore it's an eternal choice that's what god is saying i chose you and I'm, I'm never going to stop choosing you. All of your logic, why I should, or the other, the nations have the logic, all these other religions, God has left the Jews. All the logic is not going to help, even if it's all right. Even after the Jews served the golden calf, right, God did not reject them. And Moses convinced them even not to, to, to punish most of them. Most of them, God wanted to wipe them all out and make a new nation for Moses. So that's what Isaiah is saying. Don't worry about it. Don't be afraid because I am with you. Al tishta. Don't be uh, disgusted. Your heart, your heart, I'm sorry, tishta. Your, your heart should not melt. You see, the whole world is against you here, the United Nations, right? Here you see in Israel, oh, Israel, we got this wonderful army and we got an air force, we have atomic bombs and everything like that. And the United Nations says one thing, everybody is afraid. All the Jews, all the, oh, we don't, please don't say bad things about us. We like you, we're our friends. We Look, we're going to give the Arabs land. We'll do whatever you want. Don't be afraid. Like wax. <clears throat> this is what it means over here. Don't be, don't melt. Because I am your God. I will make you strong. I will help you. I will also support you with my whole righteous uh, right hand. They will be ashamed and embarrass all the people that make you trouble. They will be like they don't exist. They'll be totally lost. Those people who try to make war against the Jews. So we see an interesting thing that God does not want to destroy the non-Jews. He doesn't want to destroy anybody. And the whole main thing of the Mashiach is that there's going to be peace. And we say every day, three times a day in our Aleinu prayer, that all the evil people will turn to you, God. We're praying for the day when all the idolatry will stop and all the evil people will turn to you. But those people who are adamant and they refuse to admit the greatness of the Jewish people and they refuse to admit the holiness of the Jewish people as, and they want to make war and destroy the Jewish people as God is going to have no choice except for smiting them. And in Yiddish it's better, schmeising them. <clears throat> they will look for their idols, they will look for their powers or whatever, and they won't find them. Anche Matzatach, the people who make trouble with you, will be like they don't even exist. They won't, the kind, and all of a sudden those people who make war against you, they won't be. There's a famous uh, the, the example of this, and that is Sancherev. Sancherev, he conquered the whole entire world. And he laid siege to Jerusalem. I think he had 100,000 men in the army. And he laid siege to Jerusalem. And the king at that time was Cheskiel Melech, who he was really supposed to be Mashiach. He made some sort of a small mistake. And he was. And the, uh, God said, don't worry about it. It's going to be OK. And he went to sleep calmly. The next morning, he woke up, and there was no army. An angel came down, and he killed everybody, everyone. I don't think he killed Sancherev, but he killed everybody there, the whole entire army. So you know, you know, you're messing with the wrong with the wrong people over here. The Jews are God's people. What can we do? That's it. why are they God's people? I don't know. Nobody knows. God just chose them. That's what He decided. Because I am God, you're God. My right hand will strengthen you. I'm saying to you, do not be afraid. I will help you. Pretty encouraging. Thanks, 
<clears throat> One second, I'm troubles over here. Oh, don't be afraid, Tolat Yaakov. Don't be afraid, the worm, Jacob. In other words, even if you consider yourself to be a worm, to have no power, <clears throat> don't be afraid. There's another meaning. It says that the worm has power in its mouth. It eats everything. The Jewish power, also people have the power is in their mouth, their power of prayer. There's even a book called Tolat Yaakov. This is written by Rabbi Meir Gabai, famous Kabbalah. <clears throat> <clears throat> Matai, the, the few people of Israel, don't worry, I will help you, says God. I am your redeemer. I will redeem you, says the Holy One of Israel. I don't understand how, you know, I mean, I don't like to talk about it. You know, the, the missionaries, they claim Isaiah is prophesizing for them, which is totally, I mean, off the wall. But you can, but, but okay, they have certain sentences they twist around, you can say. But these things are just so clear. It's just so obvious. You know, the God is speaking to the Jewish people. I'm never going to leave you. I'm gonna, and, and not only are, are they right, they are the enemy. They're the enemy that God is going to destroy. They're the ones that are trying to destroy the Jewish people. And they use Isaiah as a proof that they're right. I mean, it's just, you know, it's like pointing the gun, the, holding the gun the wrong way, you know, like pointing at yourself. You just didn't really learn how to use a gun properly. What's going on? For some reason, it's the way. I only have two sentences to go. Come on. Let me do two more sentences. Uh, it's not helping me. I don't know what's going on. Let's see, maybe we can do something. I'll do some manipulations over here. Yeah. Shall we try to continue? Let's try to continue. We'll see, maybe we'll come back to that. Here we go. Uh, and... Uh, All right, here we go. We got it in English. Okay, English is okay. Maybe it came back to you. Oh, here we go. Okay. Okay, behold, I have put you mori kharuts. It's some sort of like a threshing thing with a lot of a lot of blades on it, brand new, that has a lot of blades on it. And, and very then they're very fine. And <clears throat> they'll put all of your enemies commotes like chaff. They'll put them. That's address you. This is a, a some sort of a vessel of wood that has a lot of like splits in it, and the, the, in these splits you put these little pieces like little knives or something like that, and you grind, you run this over straw, and it cuts it up and makes it very fine. That's what he says. I'm making you like one of these vessels, like it's brand new, <clears throat> so therefore it really cuts very very well. Don't worry, I'm going to make all the non-Jews, your enemies, they are you 5 500 to 1, 1000 to 1. Well, the straw also outnumbers the farmer a 500 1000 to 1, and he just takes this tool and just cuts it all up. <clears throat> so this is the last sentence. One, one, one minute, one minute. Excuse me. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Tizrem v'ruach tisaim. They will be strewn around and the wind will lift them up and a storm will scatter them all around. And I and you will be happy in God. And the Holy One of Israel, you will praise. That is the end of this week's Torah portion. So what is it saying? In the merit of, what's it got to do with the Torah? Abraham. In the merit of Abraham, 
in the merit of Abraham, God says, I will save you Jewish people. And just, I picked Abraham, I chose him, and because I chose him, without any reason, I just chose him, as the same thing is also with you Jewish people, I chose you. And that, the fact that God is involved in the world, this makes people really angry. And that is one of the reasons for anti-Semitism. People don't like the idea that there's God. And they especially don't like the idea that there's God that tells them what to do. And he's got a right to do so because he creates everybody all the time. <clears throat> but God will see that God has a right and a wrong. And one of the wrong things is, is to make trouble for the Jews for absolutely no reason. And that says, God, I am going to similarly for no reason gather you all up together and those people that hate you for no reason as I will scatter, scatter them around like the like chaff in the wind. All right, so have a good Shabbos. We will have a class tomorrow morning. You can look class tomorrow morning, 8.15. Everyone is invited. Have a good Shabbat with Mashiach now.